Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show number 26, and I am pumped that you're here today because today we are not only going international, but we are going remote laundromat ownership with Thomas. I uh, This is something that I have been looking forward to for a long time. I needed some answers, and Thomas delivered. He more than delivered. I think you're going to love, love, love this episode. Super cool guy doing some super cool stuff, and he tells you exactly how he's doing it. Uh, you are going to be pumped. So I don't want to take too much time. Shout out to Dan on YouTube, who does not like the little intro part. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I just I did want to highlight one thing on the forum. Joe uh, over there is uh, had a question on the forums about how to find, um, hire and manage employees. He's taken over a laundromat. He needs to completely, uh, switch out his employees and wanted some tips on how to do that well and how to manage those employees well. So if you got some tips for him, head over to laundromatresource.com slash forums and help Joe out again, every week, go over there, ask a question, answer a question. And real quick, I did also want to say that we have been having all kinds of website problems this week. So if you have tried to sign up on the buyers list this last week. I know we were having problems with that. Those should be fixed now. So go uh, re-sign up if you need to on that. Um, and we had to kind of put up a temporary homepage. I mean, we had all kinds of problems. Things were running slow. Um, I get it. We're working on it. Sorry about that. If you have been on there and been frustrated with our website, we're in the same boat. Join the club. Uh, we've been frustrated too, but we're getting things fixed and hopefully it'll all be squared away. So make sure you come join us. Laundromatresource.com slash join. Come be a part of the community. Super cool stuff happening over there. There's uh, there's a lot of us over there right now. Uh, it's been very, very cool to see that. So come join us. And I, don't, I mean, there's a ton of stuff we can talk about, but because of Dan, we're going to just jump right into it today. Dan, Enjoy, man. Uh, brief, brief ad uh, for the marketing. And then we're going to jump into it with Thomas, who is coming to us from Italy and owns a laundromat in Florida. Blows my mind. And he's going to tell you all about it. Get excited. Uh, we'll see you on the other side. In today's world, if your laundromat is not online, you're losing business. Customers increasingly decide who to trust with their laundry by the quality of your web presence. But creating a professional logo and website that instills trust in potential customers and can be found on page one of Google can be difficult to create on your own and expensive to purchase through a traditional marketing company. As part of our mission to help laundromat owners succeed and find financial freedom through laundromat ownership, we are launching our done-for-you marketing service tailored specifically for laundromats. After ranking number one on Google with our own laundromat website and consulting with many others to help them do the same, we guarantee that we can build you a professional website that ranks on page one of Google within six months. Our joint expertise in the laundry industry and over 15 combined years in website design and online marketing allow us to offer affordable, transparent pricing for a high quality web presence for your laundromats. You invest so much into providing your customers a quality laundry experience. Don't let anyone miss out on what you have to offer simply because they can't find you online. Let Laundromat Resource Marketing take care of your online presence so you can take care of your customers. Visit laundromatresource.com slash get online today for more information. That's laundromatresource.com slash get online or click on the link in the description. Thomas, hey, how is it going, man? Thank you for coming on the show. No, thanks for the invite, Jordan. Uh, yeah, I didn't uh, didn't imagine that I'd be on a, a podcast for Laundromat Resource. Yeah, especially <laughs> a world famous outside of Antarctica podcast. I mean, this is it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> still working on Antarctica. Yeah. Still working on Antarctica. Yeah, <laughs> you'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah, thank know, you. maybe there might be some scientists that might you know, be listening yeah. you know you yeah. never know we're we're a weird niche people i mean we, we yeah. are a very unique people that's a good yes. point <laughs> oh, that's funny well hey man i am super super excited about today uh you got a very very unique and very cool thing going on and i want to hear all about it but before we get into it tell us a little bit about you and who you are and and a little bit about your background Okay, uh, name's Tom Landenberger. Um, 
what else? I'm 48 years old, you know, married, three kids, uh, live in Italy at the moment. Um, been here about 20 years. I was in the uh, Marine Corps Reserves from 91 to 98. And, uh, you know, when you're in the recruiter's office, the uh, recruiter promises to show you the world. And uh, what, you know, the Marine Corps showed me the hottest deserts in California and the coldest winters in Wisconsin. So <laughs> after about West, <laughs> so in August of 98, I decided that I, uh, you know, I think I've had enough. Strapped on a backpack uh, and uh, traveled around the world for about three and a half years, just backpacking throughout uh, Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, the Middle East, and then. South Pacific, you know, New Zealand, Australia, South Pacific Islands, Samoa, Cook Islands, what have you. So, and then in 99, I think I, think I, I ended up. Uh, I think I need yeah. to stop the interview now. Like I'm just, yep. no the worries. envy is just rising up in me right now. Uh, and I don't know if I can handle, <laughs> I think I just need to cut this <laughs> off. I can't because I know it only gets better from there. So, uh, all right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It gets better. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. So ended up meeting an uh, Italian girl when I was working at an uh, Italian restaurant in Greece in 90. Well, I was there and I worked there in 98 and in 2000. So, uh, 2001. I can't remember the dates anymore. Too long ago. I'm getting old. But uh, anyway, thought I was uh, forever going to be a bachelor, uh, hop skipping around the globe, uh, chasing summer, and uh, ended up putting uh, the roots firmly down here in Italy, marrying an Italian, having kids, and uh, starting off with businesses here. Uh, Gosh. Started off initially with uh, a pastry shop, like the local Starbucks type deal, you know, in a, in a I don't know, decent area and ended up, uh, they have a great saying here in Italy. It's, uh, partnerships are better in odd numbers and three is too many. <laughs> Meaning that I had a, uh, I had a business partner that was pocketing money. So I decided it's better to go on just doing stuff by myself. Oh <laughs> so, man. That's a really yeah. funny saying and it yeah. rings really true. It should be a saying everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, it is. But I mean, I'm lucky enough to, with my laundromat in, in uh, stateside, I do have a partner and the, I mean, the laundromat is the same partner, but then but we've been on, we've been good friends since college. So that makes a big difference who you can trust. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what else? After, after the pastry shop, sold the pastry shop, my half um, bought a dilapidated old Tuscan farmhouse uh, without a roof or windows, uh, anything like that, and made that into a, uh, I don't know, if you've read the book Under the Tuscan Sun, that's kind of what, or seen the movie, that's kind of what I did. <laughs> so took an old Tuscan farmhouse, remodeled it, and put it into uh, uh, two apartments to rent out and our home. So, wow. and, uh, so you're living so in the how do I, countryside, yeah. is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, the, that's that. Yeah, that's yeah. I live in the Tuscan countryside. So, but I mean, it's not all. It's not all bells and whistles either. You know, it's a, it's fun when you see a country through the uh, tourist sunglasses. But uh, once you pick a country to put your feet down, you know, there's always going to be pluses and minuses of, of wherever you live. So. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Wow. So yeah, the, it's uh, yeah. It, I'm a busy guy. I'm the uh, I have what I've called uh, I have shiny object syndrome. So, you know, once, you know, once I, I start, so after this, after I got done with the project of the, uh, you know, remodeling this old Tuscan farmhouse, I did all the demolition myself and designed it myself and what have you had, you know, obviously I had masons cause I'm not a bricklayer by any means, but, uh, had people to help me out with that. Um, so after it was done and up and running, it was probably 2012, uh, 2012, 2013, and started looking for more shiny objects. And I would take my oldest daughter to school, you know, every morning and pick her up and what have you. And I would drive by in uh, an empty storefront. And I was sitting there looking at this empty storefront as like, what can I do with this storefront? And when I had the pastry shop, I had met a, uh, an American who came over here for uh, college, needed a laundromat, didn't find one. So he became a speed queen, uh, the, the only speed queen importer in Italy, and he opened up laundromat chain. So when I saw that empty storefront, I thought about, hey, I got to go find that guy. So I found him, and that's, uh, that's what got me on the path of uh, laundromats. Wow. Wow. I, it's just it's so crazy, like where it, life takes you. <laughs> 
Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, but it's, it's, I, I mean, I can, well, it's okay. It's that empty storefront that I saw that I decided to put a launch right in there. But what gave me the idea to put the launch right in there is, uh, I mean, reading a little purple book it's called rich dad, poor dad. I don't know if you've read it. I don't know. Well, a lot it. of people. Have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's just one of those things. And the, what I took away from that is, uh, everyone's got ideas and we all have these, uh, at least these goals and what have you, but sometimes they just stay as dreams. But I mean, there's like one word and that's, there's only one word that's that, 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 that you need to uh, act on. And that is action. If you don't put anything into action, these things will just stay as dreams and goals. And, and, and it's like someone keeps moving the goal line as life continues. Mm-hmm. You still think of that dream, but uh, yeah, if you don't work, if you don't act on it, it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. I love, love, love that. That's, I mean, cause that is the key and it's so easy to get, you know, just caught up in the research and the learning and the idea creation. And I, I love, like I'm an idea guy, you know, put my nose to the grindstone and, and grinding things out is not easy for me. Um, I love coming yeah. up with ideas, but like you said, they don't get you anywhere if you don't take action on them. And so I, yeah, I love, exactly. I love that. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely an idea guy too. I mean, oftentimes, well, even the uh, you just sometimes I sleep with a, a notebook next to me. So like when I wake up in the middle and I am like the next morning after I'm like, what did I write here? And I got these chicken scratches, but you know that's but that's how my laundromat was born in in the U.S. It's uh, I went to U.S. after uh, we had two laundromats here. We were looking for a third location here. Um, didn't quite find anything. I was getting, it was a cold winter, what have you. So I decided, I told my wife, I'm like, hey, listen, you need to authorize me. <laughs> Got to ask the wife. That's you need to authorize course. me for a, a one month trip. I'm going to Florida. I'm going to see if I can find <laughs> something to do there. And uh, I thought it was going to be uh, maybe investing in a small fourplex or, you know, a small multifamily, something like that. Because yeah. um, I didn't know, maybe my daughters want to go to a university in the States and, you know, just thought it'd be good to get a foot on that side to uh, hedge my bets. I got all my eggs in one basket here in Italy. If the Euro were to, you know, fall apart, if the European union were to, you know, break up with, you know, Brexit has now happened. I didn't even think about that, you know, five years right, ago. Of course. Um, yeah. So these type of things. And I was there. And so, like I said, looking for small multifamily property. Uh, when I would see a laundromat, I would stop, look, you know, usually in a strip mall, stop the rental car, get out, go inside, have a look and, uh, you know, maybe take an idea back here to where I had laundromats. And I came across one in, uh, you know, it's in Mayport, Florida. It's a uh, Jacksonville beach. So it's right on, right off the, on the intercoastal side, you know, on the beach side and, uh, went to open the door and it was locked. And at in the bottom corner of the door, I kid you not, was a three by five note card. I mean, this is, and it said for lease. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I mean, a three by five note card was the aggressive four marketing. Lease sign. <laughs> yeah, aggressive exactly. Marketing. So, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, the, the laundromat had been closed for about six years, maybe seven, uh, from what they told me. And uh, yeah, it was just a zombie mat, just just sitting there with all the old top loaders and the the old everything was there. And I kind of thought, I'm like, you know what? I think I just found my, uh, you know, the diamond in the rough here. Uh, I don't need to recreate the wheel. I know what I'm doing with laundromats. Why don't I open up a laundromat here in the States? And that was it. Full speed ahead, shiny object found and, you know, just needed to polish it up. (laughs) Pursued. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Well, that's, I mean, that's a wild story because I can see like, an average person, maybe you own it. I want to get, I want to go back in a second because we got to talk about those laundromats in Italy, but I can see somebody in your shoes owns a couple laundromats, comes out to the States looking for their next shiny object, finds a laundromat says, yep, this is an awesome shiny object. And that's where it stops because there's a lot of obstacles that you had to overcome, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. including an ocean, right? Like you got to overcome <laughs> yeah. some big obstacles to make that happen. So I want to go back and get into that and how okay. you kind of started to overcome those obstacles. 
in a second. There's a little teaser. If I had a commercial to put in, I'd put it in right here. Um, <laughs> you need a sponsor. I need a sponsor. Or, <laughs> yeah. yeah or ten. Veterans Coin Laundry Maple. Yeah. Sponsoring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, plug it in there, man. Plug it in there. Uh, so but, let's uh, go back. What do you want? But I want to go back. So, okay. So you own laundromats also in Italy. So you're, you're an international laundromat owner. Correct. I just, let's yeah. just call it like it is international laundromat owner. I don't know if there are too many of those out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, maybe not. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm a pretty unique person. Yeah. So yeah, no yeah. kidding. Um, okay. So, yeah. Oh, go ahead. You. Yeah. The, so the laundromats here. Um, so after seeing that empty storefront, decided to open up a laundromat there and a, and a laundromat here is, I mean, one, Tw- I don't know what is it one qu- a quarter of the size of a small laundromat in the U.S. I mean, my first laundromat had four washers, so two twenty pounders and two forty pounder speed cleans, and two stack dryers, a thirty pounder and a forty five pounder stack. So that's it, you know, four washers and four dryers, change machine, yeah, which is uh, here. There's it's a cash point really. So you. Uh, I like this system here. It works out really well. Well, it's just one cash point and they put, they press the number of the machine that their clothes are in and the machine starts. So it's uh, but you can, the maximum you can have 12 machines. So it's, right, a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. So then the second one was a, uh, we thought it was going to be maybe a year later and it ended up being two years practically because uh, the, we couldn't find for the second location, we were looking for another place to rent and we just couldn't find a place to rent because it's kind of difficult here with the, I mean, if you've ever been to Europe, you know, most of the the town centers, they're in very old cities. So it's not, it's not like you can just vent 20 dryers outside of a building, you know, (laughs) it's like the normal dry. Yeah. So they all go into one chimney and then the chimney, you know, has to, per Italian law, has to exhaust at the top of the roof. So the, we could not find a place to rent in the diff- in this town that we were looking in. And I ended up, just happened to see a, uh, a closed garage door. What, you know, I knew there was, must have been a store there at one point. Because on the outside of it, I saw there was a small chimney that was coming out. So they must have had a wood-burning stove or something in there at one point. So we're talking maybe a six inch pipe that was going up to the roof. But I knew with that, it was grandfathered in and then I could make it, I could get it authorized to get expanded into a bigger one. And that's so a one foot. So yeah, that's so, and then and we ended up buying that building because the guy did not want to rent it out anymore. He was elderly. He said, no, I will, uh, I'm just want to sell it. So gave him a low ball offer and he took it. And he, he's still to this day, if I see him on the, if I, when I see him on the streets, he's like, you really lowballed me. Uh, like, <laughs> you didn't have to accept. You know? <laughs> so, uh, that's funny. so yeah. And so that, that second year was, uh, we bought the building and then it took us another, you know, a couple months to get the financing to uh, put the, the machines into that one. Yeah. So uh, do you own two in Italy? Uh, it owned, that was two. And then we opened up the third one, uh, in the perfect timing of COVID, you know, March of this year, we, uh, got a third location under our belt. Yeah. Literally so. perfect timing. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you want to talk about a slow summer. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, it's seasonal as it is for here in Italy. It's very seasonal. Um, because I mean, it's so hot in the summer that people just, you know, if you throw some sheets outside, they're drying literally in minutes, fold yeah. them, put them away and that's it. So yeah, it's mainly a winter, winter activity, which is fine because with my holiday rental uh, apartments here at my home, um, that's only busy in summer. So I, with, with two businesses, I kind of created one job really. Yeah. So. I mean, it's kind of nice. I always say there's a lot of, uh, synergy between real estate and, and laundromats and that's that can be one of the ways that there's some synergy there so that's pretty cool yeah yeah so yeah it works out really well yeah, yeah. so three locations in italy correct and so well tell tell us just a little bit about like how how big are each of these oh, so square footage well square meters wise they're about 40 square meters so um, i think there's like nine square feet in one square meter so 350 square feet maybe Jeez. So that's what they are. I mean, the, the third location that we just bought is much larger, but cause I, it was, that's the only place I found right. uh, that I could 
get the authorization to put the chimney in or what have you. And it, it's big enough to where I can have an office now and make a happy wife, happy life. So she can have her dining table back, you know, <laughs> dining room table where, where I usually have all my, my laptop and piles and piles of paper. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so yeah, the, the newer location, we just started small. I, I found a, uh, bought all used machines that I found a woman up in Milan that, uh, had been open maybe three years and she just didn't want to do it anymore what she said. So I picked up three-year-old Dexter equipment and threw it in there. The other, the other two laundromats are speed queen. So, but, uh, both, both great brands can cannot complain. And I mean, with the, the usage that they get over here is not the usage that they get in the States. So, I mean, these are like lifetime purchases. I mean, there's I mean, very rarely, are mites. <laughs> what has gone wrong? Practically nothing. Knock on wood here for one second, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. You know, a little thermostat here, or whatever, but nothing major. So, yeah. yeah, man, that's, uh, yeah, that's really awesome. And it's, it it gets more and more exotic sounding too. You're like, yeah, I'm in the Tuscan countryside. I bought some washing machines from a lady in Milan. And <laughs> you're just rubbing it in right now. <laughs> well, that's what you got to do. You got to be hungry. I mean, yeah. I knew that I, to open the third location, I knew that I didn't want to go all new machines anymore. You know, I'm just like, you know, uh, that's just such a big hit over yeah. here. Because uh, they're, they're expensive. There's the import fees and all, because they're all made in the USA, you know, and if you're you know, the export, the import fees and what have you. So I decided that it would have been better just to pick up something that was already here. So yeah. save myself for this. Like again, saved a ton of money on that, which allowed more for the build out and the, you know, leaving room for expansion and, then, uh, and more machines in that third launch mat. So it's. Uh, but, but we'll see. I mean, it's just starting to take off now. It's been October's like when we start to pick up here. So, which, right. is, which is good. How many machines um, did you end up putting in that third location? Uh, I just have a 20 pounder, 30 pounder and a 40 pound washer. Okay. And I have two 30 pound, uh, dryers, single pockets and a stack 50 pound. So, yeah. Oh, that's that's Call crazy sorry okay that's okay i mean it's it's just so crazy how different like i the trend that i see here at least here in la and in a lot of the larger metros at least is these you know six eight thousand square foot laundromats going in and they're stuffing them to the gills with equipment and you're over here with like yeah i have like three washers in mine yeah it's just exactly. a crazy different <laughs> business model uh, it is yeah but yeah but for me to i mean we always said that we needed my business partner and i he's a, my friend of mine he lives in san francisco area bay area and uh to make it i mean they're not like huge money earners you know we, we yeah. pay off the debt and then you know after the debt's paid off then you start cash flowing decent right. but uh, you know what we we just always when we get to that point we then we go to another location and then we get to that point and then we open up another location <laughs> so we're always yeah which is fine you know and because once you get like i said if we get the 10 of these little ones over here then that's gonna be great yeah you know? oh yeah, yeah yeah and i mean it's, i think that's I, I think having that mindset, I mean, going back to kind of rich dad, poor dad, but having that mindset where you're collecting those assets, like if you don't need that cash flow yep. right now and roll them back in and have, you know, you got leverage working for you, you got compounding working for you and, and you have businesses working for you, other people's money working for you. So, I mean, you just have a lot of things, you know, working together to really, you know, compile wealth relatively quickly by doing yeah. it that way. So. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, I had a uh, Australian uh, tourist that came here a couple of years ago and his, his situation was the same as mine. And he said it perfectly. He goes, yes, I'm asset rich and cash poor. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly me. I just, yeah. every time I get cash, I put it into another asset. So, I mean, if you look at my pockets, I got nothing, <laughs> but I, I get the satisfaction. I mean, there's nothing, I don't know how it is for you, but I love co collecting, you know, I love yeah. collection day, <laughs> love opening up that cash machine going, gosh, look at all of this money. I mean, when I was a little kid, I went to my grandma's, you know, and after church on Sundays, we would go to the bakery, the Italian bakery, actually. And uh, we got out of the car and I found, I opened the door, looked down on the ground and I find an 1888 Oregon silver dollar on the ground. Cool. You know, 
And ever since that day, I've just been addicted to like coin collecting and, you know, anything to do with anything numismatically, coins and what have you. And I mean, I love collecting back, back to the stateside at the laundromat there because that's all dollar coins and quarters, you know. Yeah. So here it's a bit less, it's all bills over here, which is fine. But yeah, it's just another, it just makes it feel like a kid. I mean, it just puts me back to being seven years old, finding that coin on the ground is what I feel like every time that I go and empty up my cash machines. So, yeah. Yeah. So cool. I have a little box right behind me kind of sitting yeah. here on YouTube. It's right yeah. here. And in that yeah. box, I put all the interesting like coins. I mm. get all the silver quarters I get and all the, yep. you know, whatever kind of comes through. I have, you know, coins from all over the world that are quarter ish size that end up in my machines and just, sure. I just yeah. like it. I, I mean, it's just kind of cool to, you know, to see what comes through and, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I do the same thing. I mean, unfortunately, there's no silver coinage over here that would work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, since once they change the euro, I, uh, that's not going to happen. Though I do get excited every time I find a silver quarter back home, though. <laughs> I know, know, I know. <laughs> not often enough. Well, okay. No. So, I mean, pretty cool. You have these, you know, smaller locations and you're starting to stack them on top of each other. And, uh, you know, in Italy and how, how far apart are they, by the way, like distance wise, um, about three miles be- apart, each one, Oh, so awesome. two to two to three miles. So pretty close. So pretty close. my house is like more or less in the middle. Then I have one up a hill and then one down the hill and then another about two miles away from that one. So oh, and all in little towns, little towns. Yeah. So yeah. easy. I mean, that's what I think, uh, I do have one competitor, um, in between, my laundromats and uh but it's not like i want to put them out of business by no means but it's just that my service i think coming over here with an american attitude and work ethic towards service yeah uh in italy service is sometimes left by the wayside so i mean as soon as someone calls me i'm I'm like okay i'll be there in five minutes you yeah. know, I mean, more or less uh, you know i'm free enough being self-employed that if something happens, I just drop what I'm doing and go. And, uh, that right. wins me over a lot of customers. Yeah. So. Yeah. My, my experiences in Italy is, you know, it's just a different kind of pace of life and different yeah. priorities. You know, it's not, you know, here, <laughs> especially here in California, but I think in, in the States in general, I mean, you know, it's a now, me now culture and, you know, there, like you go out to eat and you just kind of hang out for a while until you get your food. Oh, yeah. and then. They expect mm-hmm. you to keep hanging out at, while you're eating and after you're eating. Yeah, yeah. There's your no one's going to kick you up off the done. table. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You stay as long as you want. You know? Right. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. I, I could see where coming in with a, hey, I'll be right there to help you out would be mm-hmm. appealing, you know, in a culture yeah. where, you know, you could make that call and somebody get there in an hour, two <laughs> hours. Next week. When they fin- yeah, <laughs> when they fin- if at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, that's, you know, so. I think that's cool. Cool little competitive advantage, um, so, but you should probably look at you know picking that that location that competitor's location up too and just oh I, I I have believe yeah. me. I mean and <laughs> at the moment the the building that because the, the my competitor is uh, leasing you know the space and the the four walls are for sale the owner wants too much so I thought that would have been a nice thing becoming the landlord of your competitor yeah. <laughs> jack up that rent till he leaves <laughs> I, I foresee a rent increase yes yeah. that's what I foresee yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that that's so, pretty funny you will have to let yeah, me we'll know see. if that ends up happening because that will yeah I'm going to try well I'm actually going to approach him um, I think at the end of this win- the end of this year and because he's he's getting elder and he's up there now too yeah. so just going to just try and see if he wants to sell. Yeah. And he has another location uh, a bit farther away, which would be fine. That'd be jump, jump us to four and five right away. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. very cool to get, you know, just a little snippet of, you know, what it's like to own laundromats in Italy. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. I had, I have never talked to anybody else who's owned laundromats. In Italy, yeah. so that's pretty cool. <laughs> and, and as far as day to day, I mean, really, I mean, could I could just go, you know, once a week to collect, you know, but I, you know, I drive by one on the way to bring my daughters to the train station so they can go to school in the center of Florence. So then I stopped by and, you know, clean it before COVID hit in March. I did have a guy that would do the cleaning and closing, but just cause you know, with uh, it being illegal for, you know, the lockdown, I mean, 
Italy was very strict at the beginning. Yeah. So it was essentially, I mean, laundromats over here were deemed essential, but you didn't have any customers because it was illegal for people to leave their homes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I did. So I, I had set up all these systems because for me, I'm a, I'm a system guy. As I had the first, when I opened that first laundromat here, I did, we opened it in, I think, March. And I opened, opened cleaned, and closed it because I think any business owner should be the jack of all trades. You should know how to do everything from A to Z in whatever business that you are going to be doing. So I did that for six months. Well, not see. I opened it and cleaned it for like three months. I said, man, I don't want to be going down there twice a day and got to close it at 11 p.m. So I said, I called a security company, got them to close it. And then, uh, so my wife says, well, you're so lazy. It's just, it's, you have one laundromat and it's just down the hill. Why don't you just go every night and close it? I'm like, well, because when I have 10 laundromats, I'm not going to be able to be in 10 places at the same yeah. time. I got to put a system into place. And then, then September came along and I'm like, you know what? It's been six months and I'm cleaning that freaking place and opening it. So I called the guy and said, Hey, we hired a guy that, said that would go and open it, clean it. And that was it. So I pulled the plug and that was it. I would go once a month or I'm sorry, once a week and just collect. And uh, then when the second location came on, you know, the gentleman said, yeah, I would like to do the second location. When the third location came on, he said, yeah, I want to do that. But because of COVID, I ended up do, taking a, all the duties back. And when, you know, I, I think probably at the end of this year, once if we can ever get out of this mess that we're in, yeah. then I'll just plug him back in and plug and play. And then that's it. I pulled myself out of the equation again. So very yeah. important to get those systems into place. I agree. I agree. And especially, you know, I think when you're, you know, you've got some remote businesses too. So let's chat about that. I mean, I think a lot of people, well, I'll just speak for myself. I'm really curious as yeah. to, you know, how this all played out from that three by five card taped in the bottom of the window to, yeah. to now, and now you're looking at potentially maybe a second location, you know, remotely. So talk to me about that. Okay. So after the three by five card in the Jacksonville, um, took about nine, 10 months with lease negotiations with the landlord. So that it took a while, Yeah, uh, which was fine. It was in no rush. I mean, if it happened, it happened. If it didn't, Hey, okay. Say la vie. Uh, we, uh, when we got the financing, we went with Dexter because, uh, that's, I don't know, just who we got financing approved by put in all new machines, total re new build out. Um, I did end up going back for that. I was back about three months doing, I did all, a lot of the stuff myself. Obviously the, uh, the mounting of the machines and what have you, that was the uh, distributorship laundry pro, pro of Florida who uh, has had a great, great uh, relationship with Carlos and Ron, the owner. Um, can, can't say a, a bad word about him. Can really help me out. And it was even, they, they were part of the plan with me, you know, being the remote, you know, they gave me ideas and, you know, how to set it up. If we were going to go with a card store, if we weren't, and, you know, I wanted to do card store because I figured that would just take out all the, uh, the problems with cash and collections and what have you. But as we were sitting in, you know, the area that my laundromat's in, you know, I'm sitting with the, the distributor and he says to me, uh, we start looking at people just in the strip mall. He's like, think that person has a credit card? I'm like, mm, no. Think that person has a credit card? I said, probably not. Yeah. And he said, you think you want to go all card? That's like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. and at that point we uh, went with uh, I'm an X drops with the uh, dollar and quarter acceptance, just for the fact that uh, when, with, with today's big machines now, so you get the 60 pounders that are costing eight bucks, you know, people don't want to be checking 32 quarters in the thing. It's a lot of quarters. So <laughs> it's a lot. Of, it really is a lot of quarters. <laughs> So yeah, we went with the dual coin drops. Um, Dexter has a app. So now we are able to take credit card payments that they rolled out. I don't know if you know about it, Dexter pay, yep. which worked out was really easy for us to jump on board with that. So the fact that we got all that and without, without the 40 grand invested into uh, uh, credit card readers. So, and like I said, with that, with learning about, putting systems in the place with the three little laundromats over here. I mean, my business partner and I knew we were going to have to put some serious systems in for, uh, for Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. um, and while doing, we, uh, you know, we just needed to find a, a honest person, money manager. So we do have a manager over there. We started out with uh, just going, we were open uh, typical, I think what 
seven till 10 PM. Cause I mean, when you spend 300 grand, it's, you know, we, we, the idea was to go 24 hours, but when, when you really put that kind of money into it and you're like, do I really just want to leave the door open on 300 K, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it just exactly. doesn't make sense. So it took us, uh, probably a good six months i was back in i think yeah it was six months after we opened i was probably there in september of 2018 and uh i just called my business partner up i said listen i think we should do 24 hours i sound like the machines they're six months old you know the 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 a bit of a, a lure has worn off i'm like when i go home tomorrow flying back i'm just gonna leave the door open and that's it we're doing 24 hours so we set it up with the you know people what have you but yeah and since then it's been phenomenal i mean that, that cut out the guy that had to be there twice a day to open it and to close it and so all these little things that we learned here we had to put into place there so yeah yeah is it uh is it an unintended store or partially attended um we attended? i mean we tried well it was unattended at the beginning Okay. After six months, I said, okay, let's get the, you know, I built out a, a corner of the store for wash, dry, fold. Okay. Um, we had attendance for, oh, I'd say about a year, but with, they weren't very proactive. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's a work ethic. I don't know what it is, but it just was a difficult situation. It was costing us so much in payroll that we weren't even be able to cover the payroll with the service that they were doing. Right. And at the end of it, because you you really need to be on top of uh, your wash dry fold employees. I mean, it's, there's just too many opportunities for uh, money to go missing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. So at the end, pulled the plug on the employees. Found a woman who wanted to run her own business out of there because that's what I was looking for at that point. I said, "Listen, I don't care. I don't want to deal with it. It's not that much income. I don't that we're going to be m missing." So found a woman. She did that for about nine months. She just left last month. Um, so now we are unattended again, but just going to do that same, that same system. Need to find an entre entrepreneurial minded person to do their wash dry fold in there. They don't pay. Well, their rent is cleaning the machines, you know, that's it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good deal for somebody who's interested in doing something like that. Exactly. You, you need to find, yeah, go ahead. How'd you find her? Out of curiosity. Uh, just, I think, uh, word of mouth from the guy who's uh, my manager. Mm. So I don't know if it was from someone that he knew in their church or whatever. So, yeah. Okay, cool. And you're, I mean, you've mentioned your business partner a couple of times and it sounds like yep. a really good partnership. Is he, is that the one that's in San Francisco area? Yeah. He's uh, yeah, he's in so the Bay Area. Neither one of you guys is near <laughs> your laundromat. Okay. No. I think going into well, this, right I was in assuming middle. he was there at the location and you were No, no. Wow. Nope. No. Okay. Yeah. So how did you find this manager? I mean, because the key to your whole operation is having a good manager, right? Because you guys cannot Absolutely. do it. So how we did you find a good manager? Tell us the secret. Oh, the secret there. Um, that is just fate. I mean, literally fate found a, an extremely honest guy, entrepreneurial minded likes, you know, we just clicked. Yeah. I, I met him uh, when I was back at the laundromat in Florida um, for whatever, a week or whatever, you know, checking up. Cause I would fly back every once, every two months, just to double check on things. And uh, now with COVID, I haven't been back since February, but uh, the, Met him. He was just, you know, a student that was living in an apartment near the laundromat. Uh, he was getting his master's degree in marketing or yeah, business, no business degree, business, business master's degree. I think in marketing actually. And, uh, we got chatting, what have you. And then, uh, ended up, didn't think about approaching him as being a manager by no means. And, uh, ended up running into him at the supermarket the next day. And we were, chatting again more and, and asked him and he's like, well, how about me? You know, I asked if he knew anyone, you know, he said, I said, <laughs> sounds like a plan. And that was it. So wow. he's been fantastic. Yeah. I hope he, you know, I mean, we're, we're just his side hustle, you know, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's really cool. So, okay. So you just kind of, it was just kind of fate. You didn't, you know, you were just yeah. kind of putting the word out there and seeing exactly. Yep. You, I mean, which is key. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to most times. You got to let people know what you want. Otherwise, how are they going to know what you want? Right. So yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So that's good. Okay. So 
what what exactly is he doing for you? Is he the one kind of cleaning it, or is he hiring somebody to clean? Is um, well, we had when I had the wash dry fold woman there, she would do the cleaning. He was just you know any kind of maybe customer problems, refunds, you know, bigger anything. He would go do the you know deposits at the bank. He does you know the coin boxes, collections, um, any of that kind of stuff. But uh, just recently. He's uh be, because I can't get back. I've uh, expanded his uh, role. I mean, with his request also. I mean, so what he's ended up doing is now uh, he's created his own business uh, for like he does all the accounting now. So okay. they're taking care of, and he's also taking care of the cleaning. So not himself, but that's part of his services are providing accounting services and the cleaning janitorial services. So he finds a guy who's cleaning, which is, which is great for me because I, I couldn't be bothered with that. I mean, it, it's yeah. just so difficult to have to find someone and then go, you know, it just, yeah. So yeah. now that's off my plate. Yeah. I pay him more. He's a, hey, if, if we can all make money, I'm happy. You know, yeah. I love that because it, it, you know, not only is that helping you, you know, obviously, you know, run a business remotely. I mean, which is huge, but the way that you set it up either on purpose or on accident or however it worked out, um, you know, it's allowing him to, you know, explore his entrepreneurship also and create businesses that hopefully he'll be able to, you know, utilize with other, other owners. So if you're in Jack, exactly. Hey, Exactly. I'm well. I'm. I mean, yeah, I'm thinking. You know, if the second location, maybe he's going to be a partner into that one. You never know. I mean, for yeah. this, uh, I mean, he asked me if he could put a a vending machine. So that's his side hustle now. He's got. So he took on the uh, the the accounting services for this, and you know, I let him have a vending machine, selling uh, you know just snacks and drinks and what have you. Right. And you know, for a, he deducts a couple hundred bucks off of the, uh, the the invoice for the rent for the machine and what have you. So yeah, so that's his side hustle. Is now he's you know that entrepreneurial mind. You know, he's like, hey, I, I noticed you don't have a vending machine in there. Can I put one? I'm like, yeah, I don't, I can't have one. If I if I lived back in Florida, okay, I might have a vending machine because then All I would right. stock it. You know, yeah. but I can't be bothered with that. So yeah, it's just too hard to. You don't want to fly you know, to just, Florida. I can't even imagine stock having, it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just let me just take that, you know, $1,500 flight back to stock my, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, okay. But it, I mean, here's, here's the question that it begs in, in my view, right? Okay. So you have this manager, mm-hmm. he has a lot of control over a lot of your business, right? Your success largely depends on you. And we've already talked systems. So you know, talk to me. I mean, I guess specifically the one that jumps out at me the most is, you know, collections. How, how are you kind of monitoring that? Are you able to monitor that at all? Um, yeah, down, down to literally the quarter. Okay. Well, tell uh, me about that. With, yeah. Um, with the new machines, I mean, Speed Queen or Dexter, who uh, they all have the capabilities now. So I just pop on the app, look on, you know, Dexter live. I know exactly how much has come in that week. Um, I can do an audit on the, uh, when we put the changer in, I had the the company and it's American changer. I had them put a, uh, a, a board in there that I can access remotely. So I know exactly how much money is in my change machine at any one time. I know how much money came in. I know how much money he, he collected. If it's off, I would, t- but it's always spot on. So it just takes, you know, it's, once a week, when I know that they've deposited, I get sent the, the, the deposit, I look what it is, and that's it. And I mean, sure, it might be, you know, is there a little bit of a difference? Of course, because maybe, you know, I'm looking at it uh, at 12 o'clock and at noon, and maybe they did the collections at 10, so from 10 a.m. to noon, but come on, boy, that's minimal. So. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I think that's, I think that's huge because that really is the key, and I think that's been one of the big obstacles to doing some, something like this mm-hmm. for laundromat owners for a really long time is, yeah. you know, how do you, how can you manage it remotely and give up control over part of the business that frankly, laundromat owners are reluctant for good reason to, to give over to someone else. Um, but also sure. have not really been able to do that with any kind of certainty that somebody's not ripping them off. Right. And cause it's just, yeah, so, sure. It's a lot exactly. Of yeah. 
So I'm sure there, the, the temptation is there, you know, but I mean, I, he even sees it, you know, as the, the stepping stone, you know, this opportunity that has presented him with, you know, essentially being a business owner, he's getting all the experience, life experiences of oh, being yeah. a business owner without any risk. Yeah. So, and, and yeah. So well, it's huge. And that's, I yeah. yeah. Finding somebody with that kind of mindset is rare, you know, for one, mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, they just want to be handed, you know, something yeah. they want a consistent thing. They don't necessarily want to build something of their own or they don't know how. Uh, but I mean, you found a guy who is not only ambitious, but he is also, you know, entrepreneurial. He's mm -hmm. using his creative mind. He's thinking about how he can turn, you know, this opportunity that you guys gave him into an opportunity that's even bigger for himself. So very cool. Yeah, exactly. Very cool yeah. to have that. Well, it's about, I mean, I think I, we were, when we were at the supermarket or maybe at the launch, but maybe we were talking about, you know, the entrepreneurship and what have you. So, I mean, if, if you are willing to talk about the things that you're interested in, it, you can see that spark in other people when you're and that you're talking about it and then they, they like that idea. So I mean, it's easy to find those people. I mean, you know, what is the, what's the quote, you know, you survive, surround yourself by five important people. So you become the sixth important. Yeah. So I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if he thought that I was that person or if I thought that he was that, you know, whatever, but you know, it's just a good symbiotic relationship. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's awesome. And I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's for fortuitous for both of you guys to find yourselves in that situation. So, yeah. well, talk to me about, uh, you know, okay. So, I mean, we kind of started this whole thing off with, you know, odd number of partners is, is the best and three is too many. Yes. Right. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, we talked about that and then you come back and tell me, well, Hey, I have a business partner and, and, you know, you said, who knows, maybe, you know, maybe this manager that you have might be a partner in your next one. So you're breaking your own rule that you talked about. So talk to me about that. Well, I'm, I'm breaking, I'm breaking the, not my Italian own rule. rule. Italian, Italian saying, rule, exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so, but talk to me about that because first I, business partner was an Italian. So yeah. I don't know. I'm just sticking with the, my close, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but honestly, I mean, uh, partnerships yeah. can be really, really great and really powerful or they can be a disaster. And it sounds like you've experienced both sides of that coin. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so talk to me a little bit about what's, what's making this partnership work for you. Um, you know, with your partner, uh, partnership with my friend, okay. I mean, uh, Dr. Danke is this word that, uh, we're just on the same mindset, same wavelength. We even for even for the second location. I mean, it, if we do the second location in Jack in you know Jacksonville or wherever in somewhere near Florida, um, it's going to be a larger laundromat. Maybe you know I'm looking at. Uh, where our industry is going today is, I mean, it's not just wash, dry, fold. It's now pickup and delivery service. So, I mean, I'm thinking that is where, you know, and if that, that next location is going to have to have the space available, you know, to, you know, to do that also, because I think that's where the, you know, yeah, self-service laundry will always be needed. But I mean, if you're going to do a, you know, a 5,000 square foot building, maybe you put 1,500 dedicate 1500 square feet to a self-serve laundry. And then maybe the other 3,500 is going to be machines in the back and, and the loading dock for, you know, drop off, you know, pickup and delivery. So it's just, but that's a much bigger investment. So mm -hmm. that, yeah, it's a lot uh, more it, systems you, you need in place. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So we were just talking on the phone with that this morning. <laughs> so about, you know, the kind of capital that it's going to take and, and, and what have you. And even I, I, asked him I'm like well do we need to maybe look into getting other partners and he said to me he's like but you and I we work so well together because we're on the same wavelength it's that type of you know and then maybe you know obviously we would use the same manager in this and you know would he want to pick up another location for sure under his belt you know that's oh, yeah. I think we got something that's working you know until it you know until something were to show up and we would say, okay, it's something went wrong. We need to, you know, work on what the problem is. It's, but it's working. So we just need to double down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, I think that's a good thing. I mean, like when you have something that's working, you can double down, you can expand, you can grow it. You can't take advantage of that. Uh, once you kind of know 
okay, we're on the same wavelength. We have the same goals. We're moving in the same direction. Let's put the pedal down and see how far mm-hmm. we can get. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and if, okay, if, if it were to go, um, well, that's not the one to say that, but if it, <laughs> if it were to go bad there, well, what would I do? I would just, you know, jump on a plane. I'd be over there and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So being self-employed, that's it. Um, I would be over there for, you know, yep. whatever, a month, two, three, whatever it takes to, 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 to write the ship and get it going again in the right direction. So it's uh, just one of those things. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just gotta be willing. You, you need to be willing to take the risks. You know what the risks are. Um, Everything that we've, you know, I don't know, every entrepreneur, even yourself. I mean, uh, you, you bought your first laundromat. You, I don't know how much you knew about it, but I didn't know much. Jack uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mine didn't work out as well as yours, though. <laughs> well, well, mine was small, so my <laughs> risk was very small. You know, I mean, I'm four washers, four dryers. What can go wrong? You know, 40 grand. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, so... Do you, I mean, do you have any advice for anybody who's maybe thinking about partnering with somebody? Uh, I mean, since oh, you have that I mean, unique perspective on both is, sides. Yeah. I mean, so I guess that my uh, original partner at the pastry shop here, um, he, you know, wasn't a lifelong friend, but maybe sometimes you can't use lifelong friends. I mean, wealth is a team building sport. I mean, you just, you, you got to put yourself or you need to go to networking, uh, um, uh, which word I'm looking for situations, network, networking functions yeah. to get you to surround yourself by people that are thinking about the same things as you. Um, it's there where you're able to, you know, spark up conversations and I mean, yeah. Yeah. How do you find the right partner? Um, I guess I got lucky, but I mean, with my, you know, with my partner, we had said since the, you know, early nineties, you know, maybe someday we, someday we should do something together. Someday we should do something together. And it wasn't until 2012, 2013 that we actually pulled the trigger. You know, I called him up and said, Hey, remember how we always used to say we should do something together. I think I have this idea. And I said, you know, it's a laundromat, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, let's do that. So it's, uh, I mean, you, you, the timing has to be right. The, I mean, you definitely, you should know the person. Um, yeah, oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think I just got, I don't want to say I just got lucky because no, I don't but what I mean, luck. Yeah. yeah. What I'm hearing is that you, you found somebody that you align with. You found uh-huh. somebody who, you know, your, your goals were the same, your ambitions were the same, your mindsets were the same and aligned. And there was trust built up between you guys for a long time before you really pulled the trigger on it. I think those are, you know, some of the, some of the things that happen and, you know, there probably is some amount of luck to it because you, you know, you just never really know, you know, I hear about family all the time who get in business together and things go bad. So, I mean, it can happen. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, It sounds like those are some of the things that kind of aligned for you guys that made it, you know, such a, such a good, good thing and making money together never never hurts so yeah exactly i mean yeah, we're cash flowing but we i mean that's the other thing we neither of us have ever taken money out of any businesses that we we just keep rolling it over and rolling yeah. it over you know i mean the the idea is to get out of the rat race at some point right aren't we yeah. all looking for that you know that that fabulous mailbox money that on the first of every month, all of a sudden you got 10 grand in the bank you know whatever you know whatever it is and there's a lot of different ways to do it but uh that's just, yeah, it's the Holy grail. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I, I don't want to like skip over, uh, anything else, any, any other parts that you want to share about either um, experience in Italy or being remote here in the, in the States? Well, as so with the, with the laundromat back in the States, um, it's called veterans coin laundry. And I remember when I said that, uh, I, I sleep with a notepad next to my bed, you know, and, so I woke up, you know, I was at the hotel after seeing that three by five note card and then and that name just popped in there. We go one, cause I'm a veteran. I was in the Marine Corps. It's uh, it's about a mile away from the, the uh, Navy air Force, Navy Naval air base at Mayport. So uh, there's a big, you know, military presence there. So I just always, you know, and then once 
you get an idea like that and it just starts snowballing. And then, then so the next location, I mean, I mean, reading books on um, like how to start your corporation, how to run your corporation by like uh, Garrett Sutton and tax right. books by, you know, Wheelwright and what have you. There's all this reading of books is uh, it expands your mind to where, you know, I mean, every I mean, I'm always reading a book. I mean, what do I have next to me right now? I have a book called Execution, the Discipline of Getting Things Done. You know, I mean, it, it always be reading at least one nonfiction. If you want to read a fiction book, you know, to go to sleep or whatever, do that. But at least, you know, 10 pages a day of some nonfiction, whatever to your liking. Um, so reading books, getting these things, and after so after reading these books veterans coin laundry was born and uh there's another laundromat owner named uh got ken barrett don't know yep. if you know who he is but yeah yeah of course so yeah and he uh when he trademarked his la- you know his first laundromat he you know whatever it's the washington coin laundry whatever but he, so then i was like hey that's a good idea you know create that LLC that's going to own that. And then just, you know, so now we're going to have veterans coin laundry Mayport. And then I'm going to, I want to have a veterans coin laundry, you know, Pinko something else, you know, and then another one, but always keeping that to, you know, and that's, those are things that I think that you need to think about even at your first laundromat, you know, how, structuring the business. Is it going to be an LLC? Is Are you going to have a, a uh, you know, one LLC that owns other each one LLC, separately yeah. and what, so yeah. yeah it's all about you know how are you going to structure that I and mean, that's all about reading a book and so we opened up the first one and we we knew what we were going to do with that going forward and they're all structured properly you know so that's yeah. uh so yeah what i mean what my advice is you know get yourself some good business boring you know non-fiction but i mean i love it I just love learning new stuff and then how I can incorporate what I'm reading into my real world situation. That's where the thing gets exciting. It's where the rubber meets the road. Yep. And, you know, circling right back around to that action, right? Learning and then putting it into action, learning and putting it into action. And that's the cycle that spirals you up to success. I'm going to ask you in a few minutes for some specific book recommendations that you would recommend um, in a second. But before we get there, we have a little section we call Secret Sauce. Listen up, it's the Secret Sauce. And today's Secret Sauce, I, I want to just adapt it just a little bit. It's normally like, hey, what's something that's working well in your business that'll help other owners? But I'm wondering if you have one piece of it. Okay, so like, just speak to me, right? So one of my goals okay. someday is... I'm in California. I'm in Southern California. I'd love to own a laundromat in Hawaii one day, just so I can mm-hmm. head over to Hawaii and yeah, you know, you know business I mean? expense. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, when I go <laughs> back to the states now, it's a it's a business expense. Yeah, totally. So, so, yeah, totally. Yeah. So okay, so you know, so for someone like me who maybe wants a remote location, I get asked this question all the time in coaching calls and stuff. Like, I can't find anything near me. Can I do this? you know, a couple hours away. Can I do this the next state over? Can I do this wherever? Um, As someone who's done that, do you have maybe one piece of advice for someone who is thinking about maybe wanting to to run a a laundromat remotely? To run a laundromat remotely? Well, I did cut my teeth with local laundromats. So, and small local laundromats. So I did have those few years of experience, five years of experience under my belt to where I did have, you know, it's, I don't want to say I was cheating by, you know, opening up the one remotely, but it was the, that experience that allowed me to say, okay, yeah, I can do it. As far as your first laundromat, if you're going to go remotely, that could be difficult, but I mean, you could do it. I mean, you already have two laundromats yourself. So why can't you already know what you, how to put, you have systems yourself. I'm certain of it. We all do, whether some are, you know, how we, we adapt our systems to our situation, personal situations. So can you do it? Absolutely. How do you do it? You, you, you know, the first thing is you take the flight and you go to Hawaii. 
You know? well, that's a good first step. I can, that's a, yeah. that's a step I can get on board with. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You can. Then yeah. now you got the first step actually is get the permission from the wife to go for a month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. She'll, she'll probably want to come with me, but that's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. So yeah, the, the, the secret sauce as far as for opening up a remote laundromat as your first laundromat, I would, I don't think there's any secret sauce there. <laughs> you, Yeah. <laughs> That I mean, sorry to no, take yeah. you know deflate your balloon, but I mean, you better get your eyes dotted and t's crossed and get a little uh, experience under your belt. Yeah, learn the business. I mean, that is that is secret mm-hmm. sauce, right? Because I get asked this all the time by new people who, you know, because the industry. I mean, the business is relatively simple as far as businesses go, right? And so people mistake sure. that for easy, and. So yeah, they, easy they, and oh, simple. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah the two yeah, different they're, things. They're different. Yeah. They're different, right? <laughs> yes, so they are. That, yeah. You know, because it's a simple business, you know, why can't I run a laundromat in, you know, Texas if I'm in mm-hmm. Iowa or wherever, you know? Yeah. And, sure. and it's not easy. And it does. I mean, like you said, it, you, you flew out here for a month and you spent mm-hmm. nine or 10 months of negotiation, you know, for a lease yeah. and yada, yada, yada. You had to find a manager. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of obstacles you have to overcome to be able to do something like you're doing. And like you said, not saying that you can't do it, but it takes work mm-hmm. and it takes commitment to do it. So, I mean, I think that is secret sauce. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It, it seems, <laughs> I mean, it seems obvious, but you know, I, I think it's good for people to hear it from you because you've done it and you know. Yeah. And I, and I wouldn't want to, you know, sell myself as, you know, saying it's so simple that, you know, Oh, Hey, just go. I mean, I I don't want to, you know, put anyone in a bad position to do that. You know, I mean, really make sure you know what you're doing when, you know, you get them, get on board with an idea. Good. Cut your teeth locally and small. Yep. Start small. Cut your teeth. Oh yeah. Small local. And then yep. go to Hawaii. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hawaii is so expensive. Cost of living there is a killer, though, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But you know, and yeah, worth it. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. We have another little section we like to call pro tips. Pro tips. And pro tips is just, hey, do you have any advice for the newbie? I mean, we kind of talked about that a little bit, but just in general, for you know, somebody looking maybe to buy their first laundromat, um, any any big tips with them? get started a lot of the questions that i see up on the forums now it's like uh how do i you know what should i how do i control the pnl of the a laundromat that's for sale and what have you and that and i'm like i said i mean i had really good uh relationship with the distributor so i think what your key number one thing you need to do is get a relate a working relationship with a distributor that you feel comfortable with. You like the machines. I mean, I mean the majority of the machines nowadays, the big five, I mean, they're, I mean, well, the big four or five manufacturers out there, they're all about the same quality. So find someone that you enjoy working with, set up that relationship and then use their experience to your advantage. I mean, get the Carlos, the guy who's he's been in the, he's been in the industry for 30 years, maybe more. I mean, I was able to, you know, find a guy who had 30 years experience, which was 25 more than me and, you know, had laundromats and has been selling equipment and that's what I needed. And that's what I found, but I found it, you know, by putting myself in the right position at the right place at the right time. So yeah, the, definitely the new guy don't, don't believe everything that the seller or the uh, um, listing agent is saying. <laughs> Dot your eyes, cross your T's, and get someone in your corner that can help you with some experience. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's just that is probably the best advice you give to somebody new. And it's come up here uh, a couple different times on the podcast, but I mean, it's just so, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And in this industry, there can be a lot of little gotchas that you may not know about. Yeah. And so having mm-hmm. that. 30 year experience guy on your team, you know, yeah. helping you think through it. Crucial. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even the, the, my, you know, my friend, that's the speed queen to, well, not anymore, but the distributor here that was in Italy, you know, the, you know, what's the word, the pro forma, you know, mm-hmm. that he, you know, gave me or told me, you know, oh, you know, industry is, you know, four turns per day. 
you know, for, I'm like, okay, yeah. So yeah, in the U S maybe it's four turns per day in Italy. It's not, but you know, it's, so uh, that first year was like, Hey, wait a minute here. These things aren't turning as often as I was promised. So yeah, that was, yeah. you know, and the second one is he's like, Hey, you're going to need this amount of machines. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm going to, you know, we're going to need this amount, but the space can fit it. Yeah. Well, we can work on that later, you know? So just those type of things, just always, you know, Got your eyes, cross your T's, double check. You know, as my grandfather said, measure twice and cut once. Cut once. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Solid, solid advice. Um, yeah. Okay. I want to, I want to circle back around to those books. Um, and this doesn't have to be books necessarily, but I would be curious for, you know, a book or two or five or whatever that you think are most influential or, and who might help people either grow their business or grow personally. But what resources do you recommend to people? Uh, well, I mean, laundromat resource, of course. Um, the, <laughs> oh, the <four> man. <laughs> oh, come on down to Southern California. You can stay in my yeah, house yeah. anytime <laughs> you are in. Um, yeah, the forums are, are really good. I mean, laundromat owners showcase, laundromat resource, um, the, the CLA. I'm a member of the CLA. Yeah, obviously, you know, there's a lot of, you know, talk pro and con about every forum and what have you. But totally. um, there's a lot of info <laughs> out there. I mean, a ton of info it's uh as far as as far as the you know laundromat specific kind of information um as far as books i mean yeah like i said how to start your own corporation run your own corporation these are by garrett sutton i believe um rich dad poor dad that's the thing that got me thinking outside of my outside the box you know about what 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 is your financial statement assets income liabilities these are types of things that people need to understand i mean credit and other people's money and all these type of things are all things that i've just picked up by reading books i mean like execution the discipline of getting things done these are i mean that's action 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 i mean the, the how to use credit to your advantage i mean how I mean what's the even uh situation of the, the 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 economy now i mean the dollar and the, you know what, there's so many things that you can learn about and read about it that i mean i saw a what was it a quote or something recently that most college graduates once they graduate from college i think some ungodly you know like 70 percent don't ever pick up books again to read you know so that that's phenomenal that is, I mean, you need to pick up books and read. We, I mean, we're, I mean, you're either growing or you're dying. I mean, it's a plant. The plant is either growing or it's dying. There's no in between. So to keep growing, I mean, as a human, you just need to keep expanding your learning. Yeah. I, I was going to let you keep going, man. Cause I, I, I think that was awesome. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, like I think that there's a lot of truth to that. And I also think that there, that self-education you know, aspect of, of what you're talking about is probably the most important education that you can get and reading books like the ones that you mentioned, I'll put links to all those, by the way, if you're interested in, you know, picking one of those books up, I'll just link them in the description or the show notes. Um, if anybody's interested in those. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't. I just put away all my books because I'm in the process of moving all of my uh, you know, all my books to my office at the new laundromat. So <laughs> otherwise, I would have just read down the books. You know, I mean, the, yeah. but there's the one thing by Gary Keller. Oh, I there's love that. The, yeah. well, I mean, there's the, the Go Getter. Is it the Go Getter? Yeah, the Go Getter. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, I don't know. Even if you're if you're in trouble at the moment, go, go the, the Dave Ramsey route. Get yourself out of debt. I mean, yeah. there's I mean, there's so many things, and it, it depends where you are in your life that w which book you need that will resonate the most with you, you know? So yeah. huge, huge. And, and like, like you're saying, I think that self-education aspect of it is so key and there's a lot to learn about and you can, I tell this to my kids all the time, right? I kind of use a little reverse psychology on them. You know, they're <laughs> trying to keep them engaged in reading and, you know, sometimes it could be like pulling teeth with them, but I, I tell yeah. them, Hey, look, I don't want you to get too good at reading because as soon as you're really good at reading, you can learn about anything in the world that you want to learn about, right? I tell them yeah. this, they get all excited. I'm like, you want to learn about rockets? Yeah. You can read about rockets, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, and, but it's true. It's, I, I like really believe that, like you can learn about anything that you want to learn about. So whether that's, you know, economics, whether that's building a business, whether that's, you know, some hobby or crap, like it, 
you should be learning, you should be growing, um, you know, to, like you said, you're either, you're, you're either growing and living and, or dying. And yeah, exactly. So, so huge, huge, huge. Awesome. I'll link to all those books that you mentioned. There's a ton <laughs> more. Have you ever real quick, have you ever read uh, four disciplines of execution? No, it's a good mm. one. I'd, I okay. would definitely recommend uh, that one. I'd probably read that one at least once a year. Uh, super good. Really? Yeah. Okay. Super good. Um, okay. Well, hey, this has been incredible. I've I've like thoroughly enjoyed every single second of this. Uh, not just to hear your story and how you're doing stuff, but I love hearing just the way that you're thinking about things, the way you're thinking through things. Uh, it's super inspiring to me uh, to hear. Uh, just the process that you have gone through to get to where you're going and, you know, your, your goals, your aspirations to, you know, continue on that path. And, you know, you're looking to maybe pick up a second location in Florida. You're wanting to get 10 locations in, uh, you know, in, in Italy there, you got some rental stuff going on. I mean, you got a lot of stuff going on and a lot that you're trying to build off of. Um, and I, it's just, it's really inspiring to me. So, man, I really, really appreciate you coming on, um, real quick. Yep. If anybody wants to just shoot you an email and thank you for coming on the, on the show or contact you, it doesn't have to be email, but, or contact you and just sure. say thanks or ask you a quick question. Is there a good way for them to get in contact with you? Um, email for, uh, it's info at veterans coin laundry, or you can, you know, Facebook or Instagram, what all at Vets Coin Laundry. Um, if you're looking for uh, get away for a holiday, coming over to Tuscany, um, mytuscanrental.com. Awesome. Yeah, but, yeah. So, yeah, you got to have a lot of a lot of irons in the fire. So, especially when you're an entrepreneur, because you, you never know. <laughs> you yeah, got to be hungry. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. I mean, if if this year's taught us anything, it's that you never know. Oh. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That is yeah. so true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Well, hey, man, this has been incredible. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to come on. I know that people are going to really love every second of this and really resonate with you. So I appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, thanks for the invite, Jordan. It was a pleasure. Anytime you're welcome here, any, anytime you want. And if you're ever in SoCal, let me know, man. Well, I, I will be because I have this dream. You know, I, I woke up just a really quick. I want to ride the Trans-America Trail. So the next time I go back to the uh, States, I'm probably end up going to buy a, a Kawasaki KLR 650 and drive it from, you know, one coast to the other coast. So Dude. I might be passing through California. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That sounds incredible. Now you, I mean, yeah, was, you started off rubbing things in, and now you're just really just grinding <laughs> it in there. Hey, we have laundromats because you don't have to be there. It's, it's uh, that systems in the place and go and enjoy life. I love that, and that's so true, man. And I love that you're you're utilizing what you got to be able to do. You know, live life to the fullest. That's what we want, right? We don't want to, yep you know, be grinding away our whole lives. And that's why we're trying to build something for ourselves. So thank you for being an inspiration for that, not just through your business ownership, but the, also the way that you're living your life and, you know, and spending time with your kids and I mean, all that stuff. Oh. Very cool. Very inspiring. So thank you, man. Appreciate that a lot. All right. Thanks, Jordan. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Man, Thomas is so, so cool. I mean, I love what he's doing. Starting out with these tiny laundromats in Italy and, you know, and now being stateside, owning one in Florida with his partner who is in San Francisco and looking for another one. Super, super cool what he is doing, how he's doing it. And I learned a ton. I hope you took good notes. Uh, I know that I did. I have a page full of them, uh, literally right here, page full of notes. And uh, again, every week, I want to encourage you, find one thing that you can take away from this podcast episode and implement it into your business or into your personal life. He drops some incredible, incredible resources that he recommends for you. Pick up one of those books. Um, I'll link to all of them in the show notes or down below um, if you're on YouTube and you can go pick up one of those books there. Uh, incredible stuff. I've read almost all of them and they are 
that, that's so good. You're going to grow a ton. So go check out one of those books, find something that you can do to implement from today's podcast. And again, head over to the forums, laundromatresource.com slash forums, ask a question, answer a question, come be a part of the community and what's happening over there. Love it. Thank you guys for being here. We will see you next week. This is Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. Peace. Peace.